Dr. Sewai is an infectious disease mm. specialist and Dr. Newman um, is a clinical psychologist. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. It's good to have you all. And Dr. Betha, my condolences to you and to all the health workers. I know that this has affected Ghana, but especially the health industry as well, as we lost our professor, uh, the director of the physicians um, departs well, the physicians um, institute as well. So my condolences. Thank you. All right. So now, I, I don't know if you were listening to me, but there's a case where a man has tested positive and he lives in a home with his family, an extended family. We're talking about 20 or more people in one um, compound. They share all the facilities and he's tested positive and nobody's picking him up. What do you have to say about this? Okay, so I think that um, the key, the, the the key, the key information is his living situation, mm -hmm. and I'm just um, comparing it to here in the U.S. It is not uncommon for somebody who has mild symptoms, who is not critically ill, to be asked to go home and take care of themselves at home. One to reduce the risk of transmission to healthcare workers, and also because there's always a pressing need to make a bed available. But in his cultural situation, since he lives with other people, um, this transmission of this illness is very, very family um, oriented, meaning it, it it's definitely circulates in family. So I'm almost sure he's infected at least a couple of people in his family. And based on this, I think that the authorities need to provide him a place to take care of himself mm. and to reduce the risk of transmission to his family members. And immediately, his family members would need to be tested as well. Wow. They need to be tested. Dr. Newman Arthur, what do you have to say about yeah. this? Because we're trying as much as possible not to give information about some of these situations. But now I guess people will be on their toes because they don't know which area this is. They don't know who may have tested positive or not. How do we handle, you know, the issue of stigmatization again with such issues coming up? Um, I think before I talk about stigmatization, I, I want to say that I think the coordination of uh, these events, I, I'm not sure how in terms of uh, Ghana, what the, uh, there's some arrangement to coordinate some of these things, but I think we should follow too because I've really had some calls from some people about the fact that they tried the number several times and for some reason it, it, it didn't go through and all that. I, I, there was one person who tested positive in a private clinic. I mm. don't know which private clinics have been uh, mandated to do testing, but a private clinic, and he was told to go home, and, and that was it. And no further action was taken. Mm -hmm. And this guy had to go somewhere, you know, to a workplace, you know, on one of the days, and he infected people. Mm. Right, and now <laughs> all those people in the workplace are panicking. I, I think I, I'm not sure how the coordination with private clinics and staff are at this point, but I think that we should be able to take things very seriously to another level. I, I'm not sure how how that is going to be done, but I think so because okay. it, it looks like we're going to record many, many, many cases uh, likely in the coming weeks. That's if, what if it looks like. Yeah, if we don't take uh, the right steps. And regardless of your health systems, if a lot of people get infected at a time, a lot of them will die, not because, um, not because of the illness, but because the health system won't be able to support them. Mm. A lot more may die. You know, and that's what is happening in the developed countries. Look at US and, and Italy. They, they have virtually everything. Their systems are very, very robust. But if you are overwhelmed, you're overwhelmed. Mm. And I think Ghana, we shouldn't get to that point. And at this point, I think that a total lockdown will help. We, we should, I, I think we should. Because if you think that it, it's, it's, it, I, it's not getting out of hand, but it is spreading. And I think about yesterday or so, there was a news that Choco or so beach. Yeah. There were people, you know, it's, you know, this is what has hap happened to other nations and, and it spread that, that fast. So I, mean, I, th I think that, if we are going to lock down, it should be now. We shouldn't wait till things get out of hand before we do total lockdown. Because our family systems won't, uh, if you, 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 it spreads, you know, and you do a total lockdown, these people with the infection are going to be with their families and they are going to spread it. All right. You know, and now we live, we live in compound houses. But in terms of stigmatization, I, um, I think that basically it's still give, get, uh, giving them the right information. 
about what this is mm. and and to know that it is it's just one of the respiratory you know infections okay you know but this one is 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 quite severe but if someone for example has common cold and you will not stigmatize them why should you also stigmatize this one mm. because it's just it's just one of the respiratory infections it's just that this one is is quite severe so we should keep educating people about this, we should keep talking about it because it seems people are not really getting their information. All because right. if they were, I don't think that those in Choco would go to the beach Definitely. and have. They don't. They don't really understand what's going on. They don't. I don't think so. Do Dr. Bertha, so about yes. the issues, we'll come back to the numbers, but about the symptoms and which one begins to show first. There was a conversation I had at one time, or was it? I listened to something. I'm not sure where it was said that first of all, you'll see um, the signs of fever before you see the other signs. Then I had a conversation or listened to something again, and I realized that, well, each person is different. So the fact that you are coughing first doesn't mean I have to cough first. And it's not true that if you have coronavirus, the symptoms begin with a fever. How true is this? And what should you look out for first of all? Okay, so in any illness, you always go with, you know, you study a large population of people and you look at percentages. So fever does occur in about 87% of people, but not everybody presents with a fever. Mm. I've had several patients who present with just tiredness. And the tiredness is simply because when the virus enters your cell, it takes over what we call your mitochondrial ATP production, like the things that give you energy to run your cell's metabolism. Mm. It takes over because now it's, it's almost commanding your cells to make several copies of itself so it's like somebody coming into your kitchen and just saying today you're not cooking all you're doing is cooking for me so um, your energy level goes down um, okay. some people will present with a fever and some will present with a dry cough but um, it, it varies from 4 everybody of people will have the loss of smell mm. um, the thing is that the symptoms of the common cold is not common in in, in this particular um, infection Okay. i.e. runny nose, um, nasal congestion, um, it's not very common. It mostly starts with the fever, the cough, tiredness, okay. mm. and so forth. What yes. about the asymptomatic patients? Because it is indicated that they don't show any symptoms, but they even spread the virus faster than anybody else. Can they also die even though they are not showing symptoms? Can the virus weaken them to the extent that they get into a critical situation and lose their lives? Um, not exactly, because okay. the, the, cost, the cost of death really and characteristically is the fact that those who would progress to death between day seven to eight of showing symptoms, not okay. when they got infected, between seven to eight of showing symptoms, they become very short of breath, which shows that the inflammatory reaction in the lung is suddenly getting worse where oxygen cannot get through. Mm -hmm. So a shortness of breath. We call it clinically um, hypoxia, meaning hypoxia just means your body cells are lacking oxygen. Mm -hmm. And this spreads throughout the body. Um, ultimately, the body goes into what we call multi-organ failure, where the kidneys, the liver, everything is failing. The blood pressure cannot hold up and they die. So an asymptomatic person cannot suddenly progress to death. If somebody dies, it means that somehow they went through these stages. But... This weekend, I was reading about a physician couple somewhere mm -hmm. in the U.S. who both got infected, and the wife stayed healthy throughout. She was still infected, but she took care of her husband till that day, eight or nine, mm -hmm. when he went into respiratory failure and was admitted to the hospital, had to be on the ventilator and everything, and he came home and she was still up and going. So I think everybody's, um, it's just a testament to the fact that we're all going to react somehow differently to infection by this virus. So does it mean she never got healed from the virus? No. I mean, what I mean is they both tested positive. Yeah. She was one of the mildly symptomatic people. Okay, so she, she recovered. Didn't develop, yes, okay. yes. She, her husband ultimately also recovered, but he, he went, he took quite a, a hit okay. from the 
the infection and almost lost his life, really. All right. Now, I'll come back to you, Dr. Newman. Give me a minute. But I just want to ask Dr. Bertha about this release from Noguchi and from the University of Ghana about the genomes uh, that they sequenced. Now, it says here that uh, they have successfully sequenced genomes of SARS-CoV-2, the virus responsible for the global COVID-19 pandemic, uh, obtaining important information about the genetic composition of viral strains in 15 of the confirmed cases in Ghana. Dr. Bertha, I'm sure you've read um, this report. Are you privy yeah. to the information? I, I've seen it. I actually haven't looked at it into detail, but what they did is not uncommon. Okay. Um, even in China, um, when the WHO paid a visit to um, China, they looked at their strains because they're trying to see if the virus has mutated or it is the same. So if you look at the reports, they concluded mm -hmm. that the strains they looked at were similar to the ones that were, I mean, the, the same virus that started in China and has spread around the world. I mean, those studies are important because you want to make sure the virus is not mutating. Maybe your patients may have coronavirus, but it's a completely different strain. Mm. So I don't think our lab is the only one doing that. Various labs, and if you remember, when you read the report, they said they were either depositing it mm -hmm. in some sort of a central location. Okay, okay. I needed an understanding of that so I know what it means to us, whether it means that what's well, moving forward, we know how to treat uh, coronavirus because we understand that well, it's not mutating. Is that what that also means? Well, it, it, it just confirms the fact that the same virus that started in China is the one it's that the has same. landed in our... Yes. Okay. Now, there's, an, there's also a discussion about some treatment. And this was a treatment they, they had recommended for a professor who unfortunately passed. Dr. Ansia Asari mentioned this, um, you know, and it's actually called Axtesma or something like Axtemra. Pardon me, I'm not getting it right. Is this really a confirmed treatment for coronavirus or does it, what does it do exactly? Uh, because I do understand that this is not a licensed drug for use in Ghana. Okay, so this, this drug um, has been around since 2008. It was, first, it, it was the first medication that was approved as an antibody against interleukin-6. So interleukin-6 is one of what we call the cytokine. Usually, you know, I talked about day 78 when patients get severely ill and rapidly deteriorate. During that phase of the illness, they describe what is called the cytokine storm. Mm -hmm. This cytokine storm is not limited to um, SARS-CoV. It happens in a lot of illnesses where okay. there's a flood of inflammatory markers suggesting that the illness has entered into an inflammation stage or severe stage. So this drug was approved for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, um, similar to hydroxychloroquine. So it looks like rheumatoid arthritis is really coming to the rescue of COVID-19. Mm. Um, so it was approved for rheumatoid arthritis, and it has been added to several hospital protocols. Okay. I haven't used it myself, but the few people who have used it that I know of, and these are personal testimonies, they report that the patients rapidly improve. Um, there's a reversal in their fever, requirements for ventilation, uh, blood pressure support um, requirements decrease, and okay. the, pa the patients improve dramatically. So it's an old drug for rheumatoid arthritis that seems to have a, a good application for um, COVID-19. Okay. Dr. Newman, before Anita comes in, so yes. you are also saying that it's time for us to uh, implement a national lockdown because of the number of cases that we are recording. Now, people are complaining that when the president extended the lockdown to an extra one week, we weren't given the chance to go out and shop. And so if I had planned or I had enough money to shop for two weeks, now you're telling me that we should go into another lockdown for a third week. I don't have money. I don't even have the opportunity to go out necessarily to go and shop because now the police are also saying that they are going to ensure that people stay at home. How am I going to survive this? It's difficult. <laughs> you know, the, the, we, we, are, we, are not, we are not in ordinary times. It's difficult. Um, and Cicel, I don't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's difficult. These are practical things. I think that the government, on the, on the government level, various interventions that have been put in place to help people survive I think we should be able to create other interventions on the national level so that people would 
have something extra to be able to go around uh, their normal lives. I know in the U.S. there's this stimulus package, there's mm -hmm. this, that, that. Families are getting this amount of money uh, here and there because people need to, uh, to, to be supported at this time so that on the national level we, we, sh we can take a certain decision. And it is difficult to control human behavior. One of the most difficult things to control is human behavior because people become who they are based on many, many past events, many, many past experiences, training, ideologies, and all kinds of things. And at this time, it is very, very difficult to, to change human behavior. That is why enforcement of laws and stuff is there to be able to control behaviors that is difficult to change. Mm. And at this point, some drastic measures has to be taken to control human behavior. Because if that is not done, we are going to see a surge in the numbers. Things are going to get out of hand and we are going to be in trouble. And during that time, we would have lost a lot of opportunity to contain this disease. And we have to. Exactly. Okay, Anita. Yes. Well, I think the line has frozen now. So if you can go ahead and read some of the questions and comments so our doctors anyway. can answer. So, if, okay, Dr. Newman, if you can hear me. Your line is breaking, and so we're just going to take some comments and then we'll come back to you. Anita. Okay, so this one says, I agree with Dr. Newman. We must lock down totally to curb the situation at hand. This is from Theophilus from Bogatanga. Good morning, TV3. Can the frontline workers explain to us why Ghana's recovery rate is low as compared to other countries like Nigeria, which is having more recovery rate than Ghana? Meanwhile, we have more cases than they do to pack from Damongo. The man and the family may not be the only people infected, but the whole area may be infected. Our president is talking, but the work is not being done. Oh, Ghana. Hi, good morning. My name is Benjamin Samani. I want to know if, if one recovers from COVID-19, he or she can be reinfected. Thank you, Orasho. That will be answered by Dr. Bertha. Good morning, please. They should alert us on the places where the outbreak is present. For instance, if you say Accra, Accra is broad. We should know the particular areas. This will even put fear in people and they will not go out. This one says, Bella, I am scared for me and my family because since the lockdown, we've been home and I go out only to get bread in the morning. But our neighbors, they do not believe we have a case in Ghana. So they go out every day and we all use the same gate handle. Please, we need help on this. Uh, we need PPEs, Western North Region. This is from Kingsford, Isam. Good morning, I'm Kojo. Thanks for your work, guys. Please continue to fix the camera on a... Oh, where am I flying to? <laughs> he says he's flying. Where am I flying to? Well, this one says frontline workers are complaining of PPEs. The PPEs are the Ministry of Health and the government said they have purchased... Why is it our leaders should be very cautious of the way they are handling this COVID-19 issues? Hi, good morning, Bella and Anita. Thanks very much for your update on this COVID-19. Please, people in this country, let's all stay home and adhere to the precautionary measures. Stay safe. This is from Kelsey Jennibel. Let me go out right. there and get... So there was a question that was asked um, from Tupac, Damongo. Yes. Uh, the recovery rate in, in Ghana and As why it's As compared to low. Nigeria. All right, so Doc, Dr. Bertha... There's a question about why Ghana's recovery rate is lower than, um, you know, the other African countries. Because as it stands, we have only four people who have recovered um, from coronavirus in Ghana, according to the Ghana Health Service. As against some other countries that have a high recovery rate. What could be the reason? Um, I'm not sure which numbers the person is looking at, because I quite remember about four or five days ago, the BBC was interviewing a minister of information that Ghana has run the rather one of the highest recovery rates in the country, or I mean in the world, mm. because 59, 59 out of our um, probably 200 and something cases at the time had recovered. So I'm not sure um, which numbers the person is looking at. Besides, that is not a very good number to monitor because um, you don't know, since there's no, there's no perfect way of capturing all our infected patients, because of the large number of people who can become, who are ill without symptoms, um, you cannot really use a recovery rate to monitor, you know, how well a country is doing. It's more of, you know, your mortality and whether you've been able to test enough people so that your denominator that you're using in finding your mortality becomes more reliable. And mm. when I say that, you take countries like South Korea and Germany, they're doing a lot of testing. So when they report their mortality, 
it's one percent it mm -hmm. means that one out of a thousand that they've tested who are positive and then you compare it to a place like iran and italy whose mortality was seven to nine percent what it's not as though people in italy are dying more it just means that they're they're testing a lot of people who are already sick so mm. when they look at the ratio it looks like the mortality is higher in those countries it's just a matter of the m testing more and more people okay so i hope i hope i hope that answers um the person's question i i believe so and uh so finally are you also asking again for a national lockdown because now we move to 10 regions that means that we're very likely to record cases in all the regions in Ghana as well, if we don't take care. Well, you know, when you go to China, at least what the WHO discovered, um, I'm not praising one race above the other, but even in their normal school life, in p playing piano or anything else, the Chinese are super, 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 super disciplined. And one of the things that WHO noticed was how the streets of China were empty. Mm. They saw people standing in their homes, but they were standing behind their windows, um, looking on the streets and not making any attempt to come out. We're giving a lot of excuses why this cannot be done, ranging from we live in compound houses, people have to go and get their daily meals. I mean, so many excuses people are giving. Here is the thing, uh, Bella. It seems as though for every country, every country from Italy to Spain to Britain, almost every country tries to delay this with giving excuses. And by the time they actually get to locking down, they're reporting a thousand deaths a day. And then they put the lockdown in place. But it's really too late because like you have so many people sick that you're just locking them up at home mm. to get sick. Okay. So it's best to do it. It's best to do it when... Um, you have fewer cases and you actually have the opportunity to flatten your curve. So I think when people say, how are we going to do it? This weekend I saw um, in my WhatsApp somebody selling all sorts of items by online ordering. Mm -hmm. People need to be creative. The market women need to come together. Some software company needs to approach them and say, look, you can sell these same things. We would have... Um, motorbikes deliver them to you we're gonna have to get creative if we can't do what china did which is stay at home get their food delivered to them and stay off the streets i'm sorry we're going to run into a lot of trouble and even the 533 we reported 566 actually that, 566 in 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 covid Whoa. your number is actually meaningless you are supposed to multiply that number by about 10 to 50 so we have 500 we have to assume that we have at least 5,000 to 10,000 people who have not been tested because we don't know where they are or we're not testing enough. And then you, you keep on doubling it every three days that if you don't take action, and, and, and it's just been seen over and yeah. over. Everybody starts with three cases. So we just have to be disciplined as a people, not just wait for soldiers to be brought into our homes for us to stay at home, we have to understand like what we're doing. Keep telling people what happens if you don't stay at home. The virus okay. loves crowds and we, we need to do what we have to do. Otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll be snapping our fingers in pain a few weeks from now. All right. Thank you both so much. Uh, I believe we'll continue the conversation okay. tomorrow, God willing. And so thank you, Dr. Bretha Sewa Ayi is an infectious disease specialist and Dr. Newman Arthur is a clinical psychologist. They are resident doctors on COVID-19, by the way. And so thank you so much. Thank you. Yo, Shidabe. Oh, that's nice. Anyway, okay. So we'll have another conversation about an app that has been developed to help track, um, you know, people showing symptoms and all of that. We need to understand how it works and how people can also log on as well. And so this is COVID-19. 360.